What's up, Batman fans? This is Wesetron back. Today we're going to be taking, taking a look at The Dark Knight Rises Movie Masters Ra's al Ghul, or Ra's al Ghul if you watch the old uh, Batman cartoon from the 90s. Um, this is uh, one of the newer figures. He's a little bit hard to find right now. Uh, he's going for some pretty high prices on the internet. Uh, but if you wait it out, I am starting to see him show up in stores. Um, there seem to be a lot more reviews of him popping up, so um, give it a chance before you go spending 50 bucks on this guy. I got him for $18 at uh, Toys R Us, which is more than I would have liked to have paid for this figure, but I still have that uh, collector's anxiety like it's going to just disappear and I'll never get it. Go back here, you see the cross cells for Catwoman. Uh, here's uh, Gotham City PD Blake, which is just John Blake, I think his name was. Um, there's Roz, and there's a shot again of the uh, bat signal. Standard packaging, nothing's changed from the other uh, Movie Masters figures from this line. Uh, in fact, not much has changed with the figure himself. He's pretty much a lot of reuse, much like a lot of figures from this line. So let's get him open and see what differences we can find. And here we're back with Rods out of packaging. And as you can see, he actually uh, looks pretty good, even though he's a lot of reuse parts. This sword is not included with the figure. Uh, this is from uh, Marvel Legends Deadpool. I just happened to have him on hand. So I got it out because I saw a picture of someone online who had used it, um, and I thought it was pretty cool. So let's just set him to his side real quick and take a look at his build-a-figure piece, or build-a-set piece, I guess. And this is the rear of the bat signal, uh, and it is a uh, the battery compartment and the light for the, the uh, bat signal. So um, this is kind of like the most important piece you really need. Um, well, I guess they're all important pieces because you can't build it without it, but... This is the functional part of it. Uh, the the uh, batteries go in here. It's uh, three triple A's. They give you some quick instructions on uh, putting in the uh, battery. Or here's the operation. There's the battery section. Um, back here actually shows you how to put it all together. Unfortunately for me, I'm still missing Alfred. So um, oh Roswell, uh, I'm still missing Alfred. So that's a problem. Um, hopefully I can find him. Uh, I hope that they're going to put him in some more cases since he was so short-packed originally. But um, as you can see, there's just a big switch back here. You turn the switch on. Oh no, the light doesn't work. I kind of freaked out about that when I saw it. But that's because if you notice, there's a little toggle right here. Um, well, not a toggle, but a pressure switch. So if you activate that pressure switch, you can see the light is actually pretty bright. There's a nice little LED in there. Uh, in fact, let me turn off my lights here. you can see just how bright that really is. I mean, you put that, that's going to really uh, magnify your bat signal onto the wall. And I think the actual lens of the bat signal is an actual magnification lens. I'm not positive. I'll have to check it out. But, um, yeah, so that's pretty cool. I dig that. I'll be interested to put all that together once I finally uh, get Alfred. So as I said, the uh, sword does not come with him, even though it actually, like, his hand is perfectly designed to hold this. It's like, it, it fits in there better than Deadpool's. I mean, not that Deadpool's ever fit really good, but look at that. I mean, it's pretty tight in there. It looks, it looks really good, too. You know, League of Shadows and all that jazz. Um, the only accessory he actually does come with is uh, his mask from the first movie, which is a bit unfortunate. Uh, I would have liked to have seen the uh, sword, um, or I'm sorry, the cane would have been really cool mask is a bit of a pain to get off because it gets stuck on his head, but that's only because it's a really good fit. Um, you know, it's it's better to be too tight than too loose, I guess, but um, if we can get a real good look at that. This is a uh, Mortal Kombat mask that he wore at the end of the movie when uh, he was doing all his cool villainy stuff. It is designed to fit over his ears, so you can see the design of the head is actually sculpted in there. Uh, so it, that's pretty cool. It fits on there really well, and as I said, it's very snug. Um, as I said about the figure itself, most of this figure we've seen before. Um, it's the uh, suited body, simple shirt and tie. Um, the only really new pieces are the hands, which are his gloves. As you can see, they're actually really nicely detailed driver's gloves. Um, they've got the uh, little uh, air holes in them and everything, and the lining is all really well done. Very cool. Nicely painted, you know, that slick black look. Um, same on this hand, you know, same deal. Very similar styled sculpt. This one looks more like it's meant to hold a gun, whereas this one's more sword holdy, um, which is a bummer since he didn't come with the sword or the uh, cane. The big change for this figure, move this in a little bit, is the head. As you can see, it's a 
pretty good uh, Liam Neeson sculpt. Um, it's it's kind of similar to what they did on Ghostbusters, um, which is a little cartoony, almost a caricature, but not completely. Uh, but pretty good. I like it. Um, I like the little gray they added to his temples. On the hair is very nice. Um, it's also a little bit up in here. And in his beard, very similar to what he uh, had in the movie. Very cool. Um, and uh, the only weird thing I have about it is the pursing of the lips. He looks like he's like going in for a kiss, which is kind of strange. Or like he's talking. I don't know. Very weird. Um, but yeah, it looks great. I, I really do like the look of this figure. Um, Articulation-wise, ball jointed head. A little bit of side-to-side -side action. Um, not much going back, but down is excellent. Look at how far that goes down. That is great. So he can really say, Oh, a legend, Mr. Wayne. Because that's what he said in the first movie. Um, swivel hinge uh, shoulders go up pretty high, depending on how much you uh, have the jacket adjusted. Um, he's got uh, swivel biceps. Hinged elbows that go about 90. Swivel wrists that aren't too blocked by the uh, jacket sculpt. A little bit, but not a lot. Um, there is an ab crunch under the tie. It's rendered a little bit useless. Not completely useless, but the, the jackets are usually pretty stiff on these guys. So like once you get them moving, a lot of times they'll snap back. But um, his seems to be fairly flexible. Oh, gosh, sorry. Focus. Focus. His seems to be fairly flexible, as you can see his belt in there and everything. Most of his suit is black with a, looks like a, kind of a charcoal shirt. Um, swivel waist, the uh, H-style DCUC hips, uh, Masters of the Universe classics, or original Masters of the Universe hips, NECA hips, whatever you want to call them. Uh, swivel um, in the thigh there. Hinge knees do about 90, and sometimes occasionally focus. There we go. Um, and his uh, sweet looking leather shoes, probably Italian, what up, uh, they uh, go forward and back just a little bit, um, just enough to kind of put him in a little bit of a forward pose, but not enough to really, um, enough to get, help you keep him standing, he's not going to be doing any kind of really great action poses, um, I say that after I put him in a pretty cool ninja stance when we started out, because that's what ninjas actually look like, they're white guys in business suits with swords, and Sub-Zero masks. Um, and that's a fact. I read that on Wikipedia. So this is Ra's al Ghul. As I said, you've seen most of this figure before. Um, there's a lot of reuse in this line, but by now you're probably pretty used to it. Um, the good thing is, is because we're used to it, uh, it kind of affords Mattel some leeway to recreate a lot of these uh, um, more suited characters for this world, which is cool. Um, I am glad that we have characters like Ra's al Ghul, who's visually not very interesting, and Jim Gordon, who's not interesting at all, but, um, you know, they're great characters that we've grown to love over the years, so I really, really appreciate that Mattel has actually uh, taken the time out to do those. They didn't have to make a Harvey Dent, but they did. So, you know, cool. Kudos to uh, Mattel for, uh, you know, taking a risk and letting the uh, collectors uh, decide with their money, as they say. So, yeah, Ra's al Ghul. Uh, $18 at TRU. Uh, keep an eye out for them. Um, they're starting to ship, I think, more of these lately to do with uh, the release of the movie that's coming out uh, in the next, what, month or two, I think? Um, maybe I'm a bit of a head of the game on that, but uh, I expect when the Blu-ray does come out that they'll see a huge bump up in these figures, so don't rush. Um, don't pay more than 20 bucks for this guy. Um, and don't blame me if you don't pay 20 bucks for this guy and you don't get him. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Don't listen to me. Pay whatever you want. You're an action figure collector. You're an adult. You know, it's an adult line. So make your own decisions. And uh, be awesome. In fact, be excellent to each other. Um, and if you can tell me what that movie's from, or what that uh, movie that quote's from, yeah, you're cooler than that other guy who didn't. Thanks, guys, for uh, paying attention. Thanks for uh, checking out my review here of Roz. Uh, make sure you check out InfiniteHollywood.com. It's still Mego Month. Uh, hopefully, by the time I get this uh, uploaded, it's still Mego Month. Um, Newt's got some cool stuff up there. Um, yeah, comment below if you have any questions or uh, comment on any of Newt's things over on Infinite Hollywood. He loves to talk about toys probably more than I do. So, uh, yeah, thanks, guys. Thanks to all new subscribers and commenters. Really appreciate it. We'll talk to you soon. Bye.